sorry. Just having a quick two minutes there. Sorry about that. Thought I'd got longer. Hello, Diane here, Ranger Headquarters. How are you doing? Uh, I'm not working today, I'm not on the production line, so I've got the day off, I've been busy designing and doing things like that. I think I've got the windows to do as well, because I'm the tallest, you see, so I have to do the windows, nobody else can do them, otherwise they'd only get half done, so that wouldn't be any good, would it? Right, anyway, today, here I am, I'm going to talk to you about my Dilution Spray Ink Pad. So, I decided I wanted to do a little bit of a, an info for you on it. It comes in a little palette, like so. And the lid just snaps off, don't worry, haven't broken it. Just snap the lid off and I pop that to one side because I find it easier to use like this in my hand. Now, although I'm calling this an ink, a spray ink pad, it's not an ink pad like a normal ink pad. This is a pad, I prefer to call this a tool. So we're going to add some ink, we're going to use it. We're going to add some ink, we're going to use it, etc. Normal ink pads are absolutely saturated with ink. Now I wanted an ink pad that's going to give different colours. It's going to have variegated colours on there. So when I stamp it, I get this nice random look. And you can't make one of those ink pads the traditional way because the dark colour overtakes all the other colours. So this is sort of a more temporary version and you can use it and use it and use it. If you decide you don't like the colours, you can wash it out. You can take it to the tap because my inks are not permanent, as you know. So you can take it to the tap, you can wash it out, let it uh, dry off a little bit and then start again. I, of course, have got quite a few of them because I can and also because I have them in all kinds of different colours. So that's the idea behind it. This is foam inside. It's a bit like cut and dry foam, but it's not quite. But it is a bit like you cut and dry foam in there. So when this is brand new, there's a little bit, you have to break the seal on this. So I just take some water and I just spritz the foam with water and then usually using the back of my hand because my fingers are normally mucky, I just work the water into the foam. And the reason I do that is because if you didn't, the ink would just sit on the top. It would just pool on the top in little puddles and it wouldn't actually soak down so this is just to break it in now you don't have to do that every time you use it because if this had ink in you'd get a bit mucky it's just when it's brand new if between uses it's dried out a bit you can just spritz it with a little bit of water to get it going again but that's how you you season it to start with now this to me is like um a good old well we call them frying pans but i think you'll call them griddles not sure. Frying pan we call. And when you get a new frying pan, <clears throat> it's usually not very good the first time. And it's usually when you've used it a few times that it gets better. This is what this is like. The more you use it, the easier and the better it becomes to use. So I ink this the way I ink anything with three colours. If I'm inking a tag, thank you Fred. Fred's here. He's holding my tag. So Mary's here. She was holding the kitchen roll, but it, she, she wasn't doing a very good job. But if I was inking a tag, I would use three colours, and I'd do two sp one spray of each colour in two different areas. And it's exactly the same. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to, with Pure Sunshine, Bubblegum Pink, and Cherry Pie. You can use any combination of colours, really, but always remember that some colours will make brown. Remember, red and green make brown, purple and yellow make brown, blue and orange make brown. So unless you want brown, and it is coming up Halloween, if you, um, ooh, Halloween. I think I'm gonna do a Halloween, I'm gonna change my colors. I'm gonna go orange, brown and black. There you go, look, <laughs> spur of the minute. Orange, brown and black, that's what I'm going to use. Um, so you can put any mix of colours on there. Now, a lot of people say, can you put more colours on? I wouldn't put more than three colours on. If you put more than three, you're just going to get this muddy concoction. Can you put less than three? The bell's going again. Like, honestly, every time I sit down, the bell's going on. I'm like, ooh, it's like the alarm. Um, what was I saying, you see? Squirrels. I know. Uh, can you use less than three? Yes, you can. You could use two or you could just use one. I very, very rarely do. So I usually always use three. So I'm going to take the first one and I'm just going to make a puddle in one area. Now you can see I'm putting a little bit of ink on. This is only a small area. When people see me inking up the first time, they think I'm putting tons of ink on. It's only the same as you would put on a tag. So I've done one area and I'm going to spritz it in another area. Then I'm going to take the second colour, I'm going to spritz, 
and spritz and then I'm going to take the third colour. Now the black we don't want to overpower too much so I'm just putting a bit and then I'm going to do that. So if you can see. Now if this was an already used pad and I was just re-inking it that would be enough but because this is a brand new pad I usually like to ink it again so I'm going to go in the same spot People say, can you put it anywhere? No, because if you put black over the orange, it wouldn't be orange, would it? So I'm going to put um, brown here, brown here, and then a little bit more of the black there and there. Now, when it's new, I don't know if you can see, it starts to pool. You can see this, like, you can see the separate areas. Once you've used it a few times, they start to blend together. So don't worry about it if you see it like that. Now, when you ink it, you can't help but get ink around here. So I don't waste it. I just pick it up on a baby wipe. I take one of my journals, some of the little journals, and I, bit, I ink a page. Can you see? Just from one side. So if I go around the other side, I can ink this bit. And I'm getting a combination of the black, the orange, and the brown. Can you see? I've got more black on that side, obviously, where the black went. And these are, this is great for just giving you lots of new, lots of backgrounds that you can then work on. And I usually keep going until I've got nothing left. So that's three pages. This is the fourth page. Can you see because the different colours, you get these lovely checks. And I could go on and do more. So I've got four little pages out of that. So none of this is wasted. And this means it's nice um, and clean to pick up. Now, the other thing is, you can see I've got ink on here. Don't worry about that. What I normally do to get this primed, the first thing I do is I turn it upside down, I press it down, so I'm getting more ink on here, but I don't know if you can see it's spread the ink around a bit. And you think, what's she going to do with that lot? I'm just going to spritz it with some water. I'm going to take a journal page. This is one from earlier. Look at that. I'm ooing and ahhing, well, as usual. Can you see? So you get a different look to your pages and you haven't messed up, you haven't, sorry, wasted any of the ink. So we got four small journal pages and one large journal page just from cleaning up with this. Okay. So then the next, first thing that I usually do after that is I normally do some stamping and I bet I haven't got a block with me. So I'm going to use it without a block. I know, I'm going to improvise and I'm going to use this block. I'm going to use this as a block, you see, up here for thinking. Okay, so I've got the stamp. I'm just going to use an alphabet stamp. Now it's no good inking, stamp, stamping, inking, stamping, inking, stamping because you'll just get mess everywhere. So what I like to do is I like to go in one area. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to press down. It's a bit hard when you can't see. And then I'm going to stamp. Okay, then I'm going to press down in the same place. I'm going to stamp. Press down in the same place. I'm going to stamp. Oh, here it is. I knew it was around. Be much easier on here. Okay, there we go. So, can you see where I've got orange, I've got brown, I've got black, where I've just been staggering that across. Now, this time I'm going to move to a different area, so I'm going to come to here. I'm going to press in there and I'm going to stamp. I'm going to fill in. Now, because I couldn't see, this is going to be a bit of a hard one to fill in there. Now, can you see all the variegated colours? On there this is what I wanted so now you can either leave it just like that very crisp as it is or we can do what I call a polish and I take a baby wipe and then I'm going to leave the middle bit crisp for you to show but I'm going to take a baby wipe now here now because this ink is going straight onto something porous where the letters are the tag is taking that straight in so they're not going to smudge can you see but I've colored the background in so we've got it crisp here, what I call polished, or you could give it a bit of a watercolour look. And I don't know if you can see where it's all blending slightly. So just from one technique, you've got three different looks there. So I'll pop that to one side to dry. Now, when I was doing this, I noticed that every time I pressed a stamp or something on here, 
I actually got the um, where, it, where it presses down in the foam, the ink runs into the channels. So if you can see, I've got the image of that there. So I thought, if I take a tag and just press that down on the top, will the image come through? This is still a little bit wet. And I'm not sure if you can see, but here, where the letters were, the image comes through. So as I was thinking that, I thought, I wonder if I start pressing things in. Now, I could go on all night about this, but I have a couple of windows to do. But I just want to show you, I do a lot of adding circles to things. And the way I add the circles with this, can you see people are like, how did you do that? You've got orange, black, brown. So I was adding circles to my work, obviously not to a blank tag. And I've got the alphabets, but can you see how it's all pooling? I'm just going to cover this completely. Normally I would just cover over a painted journal page. I could add some on here, but I just want to actually get loads of circles on here to show you. Now I'm just using my iced cup here because I've been to Chipotle, as we say in England. So I'm just using that, but you could use anything. And even on ink, you can see how the colours stand out. It's a really nice effect. But if you can see, I have all this on here. So I thought, right, what about if I take a tag and I press down on there? Will I get circles? Fabulous. So I'm just going to press the end of it down as well. And I've got circles. Now, again, because it's hitting that porous, if I take a baby wipe, I could leave it just as it is here. This bit there is a little bit wet. I'm just going to block that. I could leave it as it is, or again, I can just polish in. So you can either have it crisp here with all this texture on, or you can have it polished with all the texture. And you've got all these things going on. So then I thought, right, well, if it works with that, how about with a stencil? So I placed a stencil on the top and I took another tag. Now I'm working on tags because it's just quickly, but I usually would do this in my journal. I'll do it the other way up. But I, there's, there's a stencil. I'm just going to press through the stencil. You can see there where it's come. I should have pressed a little bit harder, actually. Let me, try, let me just try. It might need more re-inking. When it's brand new, it, it eats the ink a bit more than it usually does. So we've got that. So then I can take the stencil. I'm just going to spritz it a little bit with water. Take another tag over the top. And I'm just going to brayer it. So that I get the negative effect in a watercolour. So I'm going to put this back on here. I'm going to finish the rest of the tag to press it down like you would on a page. Okay, pop that over there. And then again, spritz this with a little bit of water. Place the rest of the tag down on it and just bring it over the top. You could go on and on and on. And just look at the really nice effect. Can you see all this texture in here that you wouldn't get if you were spraying? A stencil. The way you would maybe do it in your journal would be to take your journal, press, press the stencil down on the top. Okay, so I'll place it there and then I take the stencil, the, the pad, press down. Will somebody answer you? Yes, yes, we're filming. I know, I know, don't worry. So you press it down. I'm going to stand up. And I'm going to press this knee to re-ink it. I'm going to re-ink it and then redo it. Sorry. Can you see how I've used up the ink that was on there? So I'm just going to take, I'm just going to re-ink it again. Look, bit of ink there, bit of ink there, bit of ink there, there, and a little bit of the black. Okay, I'm just going to press it down, add a bit of water, swizzle a tag through. Pick up all that lovely juicy ink, give it a wipe, and then let's place this back on. So you can just re-ink it and go again. So I'm going to press on the top, press down, that's better, press down. So even if you're in your large journal, you can cover whole pages with this. Can you see? There's your journal page. And then, again, you can just, I always spritz it with a bit of water. I think it just helps it to, um, to 
to blend better. You can take that, you can press it down on the top and you've got a beautiful reverse as well with all the different colours in there. Now if you're used to seeing all my nice smooth stuff you might think oh this is a bit different but I love it and you can put them on top of each other so I can take this stencil and I can braid it over the top of the page. You see? You just keep going and going and going. Now with your tags as well the other thing that you can do is you can edge them all. So I'll pop that to one side, bring the tag back. So you can edge them so you can just get your pad you can just flick the edges and then you'll get this is black this is brown this is orange can you see and you can just edge I edge my book now this completely wipes out your circles again so if you wanted more circles on there see what I mean you just keep coming back you can add your stamps you could add string on there you could add other um, um, other stencils and things other designs, somebody did it with a shoe, the bottom of the shoe. And again, you're getting these gorgeous, gorgeous patterns. So it just keeps going and just keeps going. You can see the circles are back on there as well. So to me, it's a tool. You hold it in your hand, you use it as a tool. It's not an ink pad or such, but you can do, you can still do your plain stamping. For example, if I take the leaf and stamp this, this is a lovely effect as well. So if I take the leaf and stamp it down and just, you see, I'm just going to stamp a little bit to show you. Okay, so even on its own, you can see that's really nice with the orange, the browns coming up here to the black. But because some of this ink has sucked into the porous, the rest has stayed on top, I'm just going to take one of Tim's fine detail water brushes and I'm just going to brush near the edge of the ink. And it will just slowly, slightly blend across. You think it's not working at first? I'm just doing a few because I just want to show you in different colours. I normally start at the bottom and then lift. Now, but can you see here what's happening? How the shading comes? And people think you're a fabulous watercolourer. Say, oh, you're so fabulous at painting. You just go, yes, I know, thank you. So you can do that as well. So as you can see, I hope you all realise it's not just an ink pad. We can do stamping with it, we can do picking up ink, we can do transfers, all sorts of different things like that. And then when you're fed up, you either just put the lid back on for another day or you take it, you wash it out until it becomes clear and you go again. Okay, that's my spray ink pad. Easy when you know how, isn't it?